who knew that my favorite team, the Baltimore Ravens, actually had a YouTube scouting department? R reason I say that, don't, I'm not joking either. Because Deshaun Jackson's been a free agent this entire offseason. And then on top of that, Rashad Bateman, he's been hurt for weeks. But the Ravens didn't make any corresponding moves or anything. But two days after Deshaun Jackson was featured in a YouTube video where he said that he would be interested in playing for the Baltimore Ravens, of course, after he said the, the Packers and the Eagles already, but in a YouTube video where he was featured saying that he would want to play for the Baltimore Ravens, he signed three days later. Boy, <laughs> hey, social media is something serious, man. So, hey, Ravens, if y'all hiring for y'all YouTube scouting department, let me know. Cut the check. Anyway, team keep it clean. The newest Baltimore Raven wide receiver, Deshaun Jackson. Um, and, hey, he's here now. So this is no surprise. It ain't no shock. I, I think we, we all saw this coming. We all saw this coming. Uh, we figured, and, and we said it in, in the videos, like especially yesterday, that th they wouldn't bring him in for a visit just to waste time. They wouldn't bring him in for a visit just for a workout. We knew and figured that they were bringing him in for a visit with the intentions of signing Deshaun Jackson. What does he bring to the team? Well, he, of course, everybody knows he brings that element of speed. Now, um, the speed is not what it used to be. And, and it would be unfair to expect his speed to be what it used to be. Um, but... Even a slow down Deshaun Jackson still has a significant amount of speed. What I did uh, a little earlier today, I was just watching film on him. And one thing I saw from Deshaun Jackson, again, the speed is, is a couple notches lower, but still, he's, he's still got some decent speed. But one thing I noticed about him is he does a lot of protecting himself. And I mean, 35 years old, I get it. I get it. Um, and but what, I, what I mean when I say protecting himself, uh, a lot of uh, sliding down before contact, a lot of running out of bounds before contact. So I know a lot of Ravens fans that uh, remember when somebody else did that and they didn't really like it. I, I don't know what to tell you. But uh, as long as he's getting behind defenders, um, then I think Ravens will be A-OK. Um, I, I did see somebody say <laughs> I saw somebody say, oh, another receiver for Lamar Jackson to overthrow. Uh, but, hey, look, yeah, Lamar got it. He got to work on it. He got to tone it down a little bit. But he'll, he'll be all right. I, I ain't worried about that long term, man. Lamar just had a couple of off weeks. He'll be fine. Um, but these Ravens receivers, right now the Ravens receivers, um, healthy, are Deshaun Jackson, uh, Devin DuVernay, um, Tylen Wallace, James Prochet, Demarcus Robinson. Uh, I feel like... Demarcus Robinson was brought in to be what I figured Deshaun Jackson, what his role would be, uh, be that speedster, that downfield threat. But we just haven't really seen much of that. Haven't seen much of it. Um, so with Deshaun Jackson coming in, uh, we'll see how he fits into the mix. Now, uh, you got to figure like Deshaun Jackson will be up like right away. Got to figure he'll be up right away. They don't practice till tomorrow. Um, so even if he's on snap count, I mean, that, oh, yeah, Andy Isabella, too. Forgot about him. Andy Isabella. They still got him, too. So um, we'll see what the Ravens are doing with this move. Uh, but this will definitely have a big impact, uh, on my opinion. Well, not even a big impact because it's not like they're out there on the field too much anyway. Uh, this would have an impact on James Prochet and Tylen Wallace for sure. Um, and that I actually thought that the end, Andy Isabella, that move was going to have a big impact on Tylen Wallace and James Prochet, but we ain't seen Andy Isabella yet, but with Deshaun Jackson, like <laughs> Deshaun Jackson hit that threshold for where, Hey, you, Oh, you, Oh, you 35. Oh yeah. You definitely gonna have an impact for us Baltimore Ravens. Um, but now we, uh, through all the jokes and everything, uh, about Deshaun Jackson joining the Baltimore Ravens as an older wide receiver, uh, we, of course, all hope that he does well. We, we hope that he goes off. We hope that he proves a lot of us wrong and just comes through. We hope that he continues making all those big plays that he once made as a Philadelphia Eagle. Um, we hope that he goes out there and does his thing. But 
Uh, this continues to show the Baltimore Ravens and what they've been doing, or actually what they haven't been doing for their quarterback. This is the way that the Ravens have put together wide receiver units for Lamar Jackson straight up has been terrible. It's been terrible. It's been very lackluster. It's been lazy. It's been inexcusable. Straight up. It, it, it has been that way. And it seems like there is just no effort in it. There's no effort. You say you want to sign this quarterback to a long-term deal. You say you want him to be your quarterback of the future. You say all these things, but your actions for the past five years has shown the opposite of that. It's shown the opposite. And, and that's one of the most frustrating things about this team. Again, we, we love the team. Enjoy watching them, root for them and all that. But it's okay to call them out on stuff that you see as straight up wrong. And the way that they have set Lamar Jackson and his offense up when it comes to wide receivers has been straight up wrong, man. It's been wrong. And I know they got their old philosophy issues and whatnot. I know some people are going to talk about the usage of wide receivers and whatnot. But why should the Ravens continue to almost settle when it comes to the talent at wide receiver instead of really going out there and really making some stuff happen? And it, 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 what makes it even worse is when you look around the league at everything that all these other teams are doing for their quarter, their young quarterbacks who are both on rookie deals and not on rookie deals. There is no excuse for any of this, man. There's no excuse. Obviously, like I said, I hope everything works out, but the way that the Ravens have done this, the way that the Ravens have done their quarterback, I, I, I just, I, I ain't a big fan of that, man. And I have not been a big fan of that, as y'all already know. And it's like the, the Ravens, they take this, this approach to the wide receiver position where it's just they show such a lack of value. They, so, they show such a lack of value at the wide receiver position, and they have done this constantly. And I know so many people, oh, well, they drafted a wide receiver in the first round. They drafted Hollywood in the first round of 2019. They sure did, and accompanied him with what? With Willie Sneed? Seth Roberts? How much did that cost him? Pretty much nothing. They went the cheap route. Then 2020, they still had Snead. They still had Hollywood, obviously. It's still Bad Boykin. Had, um, they brought in Dez Bryant toward the, the, the later half of the year. It's like, really? It, what's, that, what's that moving? Then 2021, they drafted Rashad Bateman. Still had Hollywood, obviously. He had Boykin. Uh, brought in Sammy Watkins, and again, w w one mil six. I mean, one year six mil. And I, I thought that that was the best group, the best unit that Lamar Jackson had ever had. But for that to be the best unit that Lamar Jackson had ever had, it's a pretty low bar. It's been a low bar. It's been a very low bar. And then this year. Rashad Bateman, Devin Duvernay brought in Demarcus Robinson, Proche Wallace. Now Bateman been hurt for a couple weeks. They bring in Deshaun Jackson. It's like, I, I, I just, I don't know, man. It just does not seem, like I said before plenty of times, it does not seem like they are really invested in Lamar Jackson like that. It doesn't. They'll bring in tight ends. Obviously kept Mark Andrews, re-signed Nick Boyle too. Even reworked his contract. Then double down on tight end in the draft. And I mean, we got some good news on one of the tight ends, by the way. Shout out to Charlie Kolar because now he's been cleared to practice. So that's nice. The Ravens, are, they're getting some people back. And Ravens, they've they, they been busy today. Um, and let, let's, let's just go over that real quick. Uh, because the uh, I, when, when Ravens first announced that Charlie Kolar was going to be back, I was like, oof. But then I was like, you know what? Whenever they make an announcement like that, I say, let me wait, because when Ravens make announcements, they make like 50 all at the same time. Yeah, Y'all know it. They make like 50 all at the same time. So they said that uh, Charlie Kolar, he'd been cleared to return to practice. That's great. That's a good thing. Ravens get yet another guy at the tight end position. Oh, yeah. So now they have what? Well, not yet. 
he got his 21 days, but we'll see if they use all 21 days, if they get him back on the roster before. But they got Mark Andrews, Nick Boyle, Isaiah Likely, and Josh Oliver. And then soon to be Charlie Kolar. So are there, is there going to be an odd man out? I couldn't tell you. Now, normally, I would say yes. I would be like, yeah, somebody's going to get cut, and I would think it would be Oliver. But at the same time, Oliver been out there a lot. Oliver has been out there a lot. They're not going to move Isaiah Likely. They're not going to put him on IR or nothing. So it's like, ooh, what's going to happen? Obviously, Mark Andrews, nothing's going to happen with him. So what's going to happen? Because if y'all remember, before the season started, when we were doing all the, the roster predictions and all that, I said for the tight ends, and I think this was before Charlie Collard was revealed that he had an injury, a sports hernia, I think. But um, I said that I thought the tight ends were going to be uh, Mark Andrews, uh, Nick Boyle, Isaiah Likely. Um, and then, oh, no, 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 Charlie Collard, he was injured. He, his injury came out before the roster. So I thought it was going to be uh, Mark Andrews, Nick Boyle, um, and Mark Andrews, Nick Boyle, and Isaiah Likely. And I thought they would keep Charlie Cola on the initial roster, but put him on IR. But I thought that Josh Oliver was our man out. Raven said, nope. Four tight ends. We keeping all four. So, oh, okay. So who, who knows? By the way the Ravens do things, they may end up keeping all five. Uh, but that's good news that he'll be back because it gives the Ravens that many more options. Uh, they, of course, announced the signing of uh, Devon Kennard. Um, to the practice squad, and they released Brandon Copeland. Now, that was a move that I um, I forgot about when we made the video about them signing Brandon, I mean, excuse me, Devin Kennard earlier. Uh, I was thinking that it may have something to do with Justin Houston or A.J. Klein because of the penalty uh, or Tyus Bowser or Jabo's recovery, but I completely slipped my mind about Brandon Copeland. So they just did a swap at linebackers on the practice squad. And then uh, they also announced that they signed another linebacker to the practice squad named Julian Stanford. Um, I don't have any information, anything about him, uh, so I can't really speak on it. Um, and they released Jeremiah Atachu from the practice squad and wide receiver Slade Bolden from the practice squad as well. I thought that Slade Bolden was actually, I didn't know he was on the practice squad. I thought he got an injury settlement from the Ravens. I, I really thought that he did. But maybe it was somebody else. I don't know, because I know Shamar Bridges got one, and I thought Slade Bolden got one, too, because I really thought they put him on IR. Anyway, um, so that's that. But when I saw that they released uh, Slade Bolden from the practice squad, I figured, oh, okay, that's that's probably Deshaun Jackson's spot now. It's probably Deshaun Jackson's spot. But anyway, so Ravens have been busy with all that. But, yeah, back to the, the receiver talk. It's just... <laughs> The way they've been handling it, handling it has just been very lackluster, in my opinion. It's been very lackluster. And I, I hate that this is, 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 is a conversation that we've had over and over and over and over and over for years. Um, the biggest reason, and I repeat, the, the biggest reason this, this year, in my opinion, because, again, it's for the people that are like, hey, we need to develop the wide receivers, let the young guys play, I get that in previous years. This is not, in my opinion, this is not a, hey, let's let the young guys play this year. Oh, Lamar's in his contract year. So Lamar's trying to get the most money that he can possibly get, trying to put on the best display for the Baltimore Ravens he possibly can. You know what? Let's let the receivers develop this year. No. No. If there would be any year where you would not go against the grain with what you normally do. Well, actually, they've normally been doing this, especially when it comes to the older receivers. But if there was ever a year where you would really like really go in for your quarterback, because, again, you got this. You got a decision to make. You say you want to sign him. You say you want to give him the money. So why not put him in the best situation possible? Mark Andrews is phenomenal. He is an amazing tight end, but he's just that, an amazing tight end. He is not a wide receiver. He does not substitute as a wide receiver. I know so many people want to say, oh, Mark Andrews is, is Lamar Jackson's wide receiver one. No, he's his number one target. He is not Lamar Jackson's wide receiver one because he is not a wide receiver. So wide receivers do not line up next to the offensive line. They don't. Mark Andrews does that. Mark Andrews is a tight end, not a wide receiver. 
And even if he was a wide receiver, which he's not, he's a great tight end, phenomenal tight end. But that should not excuse you from still adding quality, high quality talent at wide at the wide receiver position. Rashad Bateman going into his second year. Again, he, he looks like he's going to be the part. He's looked good so far. I know he had his drops and whatnot, but he's made more plays than he's dropped. So that's my biggest thing. If anybody got drop problems, hey, if, if you're making more plays than you're making drops, cool. Drops are going to happen. Everybody drops every once in a while. It's okay. It's not the biggest thing in the world. But with the Ravens, it's bigger. I was just talking to my guy Jamil about this a little, a little while ago. With the Ravens, drops are made that much bigger. Drops, any misses that Lamar make, any autumn overthrows, everything gets highlighted that much. And we talked about this with Hollywood too, that with the Ravens, any mistakes that they make in the passing game, whether Lamar overthrows somebody or misses somebody, whether the receivers drop or whatnot, any mistakes made in the passing game, they get emphasized so much. Because the Ravens, they have this low volume of, pa of, of the passing game. It's such a low volume. So everything gets mac maximized that much more. Everything gets emphasized that much more. So it looks that much worse. And sometimes it looks that much better. But for the mistakes, they always look that much worse. Because there's so little room for error. You can't make mistakes with Ravens passing game because y'all don't pass the ball that much. So Ravens just got they 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 really got I, I was I was going to say they got some soul searching to do, but they know who they are. They know who they are. We know who they are. And this this whole wide receiver talk, this is not based off of them losing to the Giants. I know a lot of people think that I've seen people say, oh, well, if, if, if the Ravens would have beat those Giants, would we really be having this conversation about the wide receivers? Yes. Yes, because we've been having it. We've been having it. This is old news. So for them with this move, and again, like I said, I hope Deshaun Jackson works out. I really do. We all do. But Ravens, they, they got to get out of this nasty habit of what. But I don't know if they will. But and who knows? Who knows when they will because of the timing? Think about the timing. Again, Lamar is fifth year option. This is fifth year option. So <laughs> he ain't signed beyond this year. I know what the franchise tag is. I know what the possibilities are with that. But he ain't signed beyond this year. And who knows, man? Who knows? Deshaun Jackson just here for the year. He ain't he not here long term. And not that he even needs to be here long term. But the the, the Ravens, I I I want to say the Ravens gotta get out of this cycle. But will they? Do they even care to get out of this cycle? With the timing of this signing and just the way that they moved, I wouldn't think so. I don't think so. So this, again, when, 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 you, when you know your team, when you know your team, you know your team. And plenty of y'all, you know these Baltimore Ravens. You know how they operate. You know how they operated in the past. You know how they operate currently. And when it comes to the wide receiver position, not much has changed. No, a lot of people like to say, oh, well, the Ravens, they zigging while everybody else is zagging. Well, you, you, you cannot zig when it comes to the quarterback position. You cannot zig when it comes to really providing for your quarterback. Don't, you can't zig. I know Ravens, they don't want to be like everybody else and whatnot. They want to do it their way. It's their way or the highway. And it just... It ain't maximizing your quarterback, man. It's really not. It's not the way that they've been doing it. It's not bringing out the best in your quarterback. And there's other ways that I feel like they haven't brought out the best in, in Lamar Jackson. We talk about that another time. But specifically, the way that they treat this wide receiver position, it's been terrible overall, man. It's been terrible. It ain't been all bad. But overall, the way that they treat the position, even with Flacco too, this is nothing new. This is not just a Lamar Jackson thing. They did it with Flacco too, but they got to change this, man. They got to change this. Or else it's, it's going to be the same old stuff, man. It's going to be the same old stuff. If, if you got a quarterback and you're questioning different things on him, oh, is he accurate? Can he make this throw? Can he make that throw? If you're apparently questioning these things, 
then why would you give him question marks at the receiver position? Why not give him answers? Why not give him answers? If you truly are questioning this quarterback, if you're not 100% sold on this quarterback, whatever it may be, why would you not set him up to show you? Why would you not provide him, give him everything so he can show you? I just, I, I, I don't get it, man.